let's talk about another interesting thing that um, thanks to Elon, our lives are so in interesting. But <laughs> at the IAC in, um, in Baku last year, Elon uh, was asked about the potential of, uh, well, he sent a road, his roadster up, uh, which is right now in space orbiting the Earth and, and Mars. So he was asked, why not build a rover? And if the Cybertruck could uh, perhaps be a rover for the moon, and this is what he said. Let's do it. Put a Tesla in space. This was like an amazing uh, thing to see a Tesla actually flying into space. So you've already put, yeah. put one of the vehicles in space. Are you thinking about yeah. making a Tesla rover? Uh, maybe moon or Mars? Uh, any any ideas for a cyber truck on the moon? It would look cool. That's for sure. Um, the nice thing, the nice thing about electric cars is that obviously do not require oxygen. To uh, they're not combustion cars, so they don't they don't require they don't have to ingest oxygen from the uh, ambient atmosphere. Um, so um, yeah, I think you know, Tesla could easily make a car that uh, you know like a cyber truck. Lunar variant, <laughs> just get, get the get the moon option package. You could get the moon option package with the Cybertruck variant. Wouldn't that be cool? Yes, it would. And of course, the original lunar rover was electric, also. Yeah. So, uh, for for that very same reason, couldn't be internal combustion. The tires, I think, were like woven titanium mesh or something like that, um, because it, again, you, you can't exactly inflate tires on the moon. Yeah. Um, and uh, the rubber probably yeah. get torn to shreds pretty quickly. I mean, you could inflate tires if you have a. You could, a, yeah. It's just that air source. But it's, it's, just, it's the source. Yeah, it's, they. It's yeah. a point of failure that they you know. Yeah. Need. And the and of course, they're trying to come up with um, airless tires here on Earth. You know, I, yeah. I know Tesla's been working mm. with others. That it's the dream of everyone to finally have tires. That you don't have to, to actually put air in. So yeah. the. Um, and, and of course, the other thing is, I think the, the titanium mesh was was very light. So everything is about making sure everything is as light as possible, it's as durable as possible. You have the um, electric propulsion that was in there, which which absolutely made sense. And I'm not sure what batteries they were using at that time for Apollo, whether they were also using the same kind of hydrogen nitride battery or, or something else. But it even might have been in those active, days, I'm not sure. Yeah, it might. Yeah, it could have been. E e even then, they got pretty decent range. Oh, man, but I don't I can, I yeah. See. So yeah. Yeah. The lead acid. I kind of wonder. Man, it's, it, it's the lead and the lead acid battery that bothers me. It's like it's heavy. <laughs> so yeah. you're talking about mass. The um, so we we know it can be done. Um, it does raise you know interesting questions. When you look at the rover. Do you really need to have it enclosed or not? So if you're going to have a cyber truck on the moon, does it need to just be a buggy? Does it really need to be enclosed? Uh, you know, the only reason you would do that is because you want a shirt sleeve environment. But uh, if the idea is going getting in and out, you're going to have to be wearing your spacesuit. So it's a lot easier to be able to get in and out of something like this. That's a spacesuit. Uh, the so there, I think there'd be a lot of vari variations on there. And the question is whether the Cybertruck stainless steel is like the ideal body that you would want to have or, or material for being on the moon. And yeah. So the uh, the shape of the vehicle is not really optimized for being a mm -hmm. uh, pressurized cabin, and the doors yep. are also not. Uh, ideal for for ha having an air seal, uh, but I think that there's another use case for an unpressurized rover uh, that is, that has that external skin, which is that I mean this is something that the uh, that the Apollo astronauts really struggled with um, is all that lunar dust that's being you know kicked off by the tires is just getting everywhere. Um, so just protection from that I think would be mm -hmm. really valuable. And as far as mass goes, I mean, that's that's the beauty of having something that could land 30 tons, 100 tons uh, on the lunar surface and just drop one of these cyber trucks on. It's just, it's just it doesn't make much of a difference. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a three ton vehicle, right? Or two and a half tons. Yeah. 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 Uh, and speaking of austere environments, I mean, I think there's a lot of visual signposting going on in this video that Tesla brought out a few weeks back. I mean, if you look at the beginning, uh, all of the, look at these locations. I mean, it's it just could be on the Mars, uh, on Mars, or on the Moon. Yeah, for all, yeah, for all you can. You know, and you, yeah. yeah, and and Ozan brings up a, a really good point that the Cybertruck was designed for a low coefficient of drag. It's not yeah. a problem on the Moon. So yeah, you know, yeah. So you can come up with any shape that's ideal, and sure. you know, I, I imagine almost the ideal kind of enclosure would be some sort of kind of bubble that would go around. You know, just 
it, it can be very light, but I agree, you know, part of the idea is to um, to make sure you're not exposed to regolith or anything like that. Um, okay. I was going to say, in addition to that, you know, the, the arrow dynamics is useless. It's the, you know, the flat surfaces uh, are not good for that pressure differential. If you want a one bar atmosphere inside and you have vacuum inside, it's just it, it wants that bubble shape um, that Scott was saying. Yeah, and I think that's what usually we'd always see in those those 50s and 60s sort of science fiction showing what these rovers look like. They always bubble out for exact that reason is because yeah. it's much better for the pressure. And I mean, it's just also cool if it's like this is kind of this glass sphere. And the question is like, how structural does that need to be? Because you're not going to yeah. be barreling along at 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be going sure. at reasonable rates. And, and then um, so it could be something pretty light. Yeah. Uh, it just has to be, you know, if it and the question is, does it have to, if it needs to be pressurized, then it's going to be strong enough for that. But if it doesn't need to be pressurized, if the whole idea is just to protect you from all the regolith that's going to be getting kind of kicked up as you're driving around, especially if it's like one rover is following another rover, yeah. <laughs> the one in front yeah. is probably going to be throwing a lot up. So, um, there, yeah, there could be I two mean, reasons for doing that. When it comes to toughness of vehicles, I doubt you'll get tougher than the Cybertruck to protect mm. you from all that uh, abrasive of regolith. Um, but it, it's interesting. I mean, I just I was thinking about the the truck bed and and the fact that it's Tesla's designed in such a way that it there's a cover that rolls over it. There's there's a lot of space to carry scientific equipment, maintenance equipment, even life life supporting life su saving equipment. If you had uh, FSD on the moon, uh, you could just have a couple of bots hanging out in the in. in in the truck being driven around from point A to point B. It Absolutely. wouldn't take much, would it? No, yeah. no, not much. And and again, you'd probably be more like a, a variant of the cyber cyber van or something like that is probably mm -hmm. what you would end up seeing on the moon because you know that that'd be the version that's let's say less aerodynamic, maybe more roomy, easier to get in and out. Um, a lot of people have asked about, oh can't Optimus just get in and, and drive the cyber truck? I'm like, well, you know, Optimus isn't very flexible. I think it would be really hard for Optimus to attempt to actually... But does Optimus need to drive the truck with no, FSD? No, no, no. But, but the point I'm making is, like, an astronaut wearing a suit, it's almost like yeah. Optimus trying to get in one of these things. So of it course, would have yeah. to be redesigned to make it very easy for uh, ingress and egress. Absolutely. It would Absolutely. be it would be a really cool visual, though, if they had an unmodified yeah. Cybertruck with an Optimus in the driver's seat, just land that thing and then have the Optimus drive, you know, you know have, have the Cybertruck drive Optimus around a little bit and then Optimus get her. Let's start a campaign. That would be an amazing Let's get Elon to do this. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, that's that's when you say, oh, the future has arrived. Right, but...